wonderful, wonderful good evening to all of you who are gathered here this evening. And a special welcome to the people of Merrick's, Lynch's, Casarina Estate, Apple Hall and Apple Hall Development, Bottom Bay, Pete Bay Road, and of course those persons who are following this meeting this evening through live streaming, people in St. Philip North, people across the rest of Barbados, the Caribbean, and indeed beyond. Welcome to the platform of the Barbados Labour Party, which is meeting this evening in support of the candidate for St. Philip North, Dr. Sonia Brown. Now we have a full list of candidates this evening, and therefore the chairman will not have much to say. We, the candidates, the speakers we have are Shanika Roberts Odell, Charles Griffith, the candidate for St. John, Henderson Clark from this community, the Honorable Mayor Mortley, Prime Minister of Barbados, of course, Dr. Sonia Brown, our own candidate, Tony Moore from St. George North, and Inda Weir from St. George South. From St. Philip South. Thank you for correcting me. So this promises to be a very good evening for us all. Now, the first speaker this evening is one of the, the young, dynamic female members of the Barbados Labour Party. She has served the party in a number of positions, including that of second vice chairman of the party. She is a specialist in international trade policy. She really and truly is one of the young people that will have a promising future, not only in Barbados Labour Party, but across Barbados. Please help me in welcoming to St. Philip North, Miss Shanika Roberts Odell. opportunity to address you tonight. One thing, one of the things that the chairman would have said that is most important to me, it was most important to me last election. It is most important to me this election. And I think I have enough years that it will be most important to me next election. And that is being a young person in this country someone who is progressing for their future, someone who cares not only about myself, but about my peers. Last election, I stood on every possible stage I could. I begged for every opportunity to get in front of a microphone and speak to those who were my generation, speak to those who were my age, because I understood what we were going through. I understood what it was to come up under parents who said, your education is the most important thing. You must value it. You must pursue it at all costs. And then to have the rug pulled from under you and told, well, you know what? I, I, I can't help you right now. I have other things to focus on. How can you say it to eight people, to the youth of a country for which you're number one? Number one resource is its people. That you could just have to figure it out on your own. Last election, I, I walked the length and breadth of this country and I spoke to men who just wanted to learn a little trade. They wanted to be able to feed the children, to buy a drink every now and then, 
to pursue the future that their parents had envisioned for them. But they were confused as to how to do it in a country where no one cared about what you were going to do, about your passions, about your pursuits, about your future. This election, I can stand on a stage and represent a government who has done its very best through the ash, through the COVID, through the storms. This Barbados Labour Party has invested in the young people of this country and we ain't finished yet. This Barbados Labour Party put back free education at the University of the West Indies. You could not imagine how mystified I was to see a representative of the Democratic Labour Party saying they did not remove free education. They just said, well, you got to pay for it. I am so confused. Is that not the same thing? They cannot be ready. You cannot be ready to come to an educated population. People who have gone through primary and secondary. People with common sense as well as book learning and tell them that you did not do what their eyes saw, what their ears heard, and what, in some cases, they felt in their very souls. The Democratic Labour Party could not possibly be ready yet. This Barbados Labour Party took on the task of investing in skills training. We did a national training initiative. We trained 60,000 people in two years in spite of the ash, in spite of COVID, and in spite of Hurricane Elsa, that is a government that is working for you. We went ahead and said, hey, everybody don't want to do X and do Y. There are people who have a burning desire to own a business. There are people with ideas that just need a little capital and a little guidance. And we opened the trust loans program. We took $18 million, broke it out amongst 4,000 Barbadians and said, pursue your passion, my people. Pursue what burns in your belly. We will be behind you. That is a government that cares. That is a government that is ready. That is the government you want in front of you when you have times coming where you are uncertain, where you are unsure. This Barbados Labour Party gives guidance. It gives a backbone. It gives assurance. It gives safety. That is the Barbados Labour Party that has run this country. But we didn't stop there. Because I know plenty of young people. My first job was in a call center. Don't let the title fool you. And I worked in call centers all through university. And after university for a bit as well. I know what it is to work in a job that pays you what was the minimum wage. But this Barbados Labour Party came to you in a manifesto and said I was going to raise the minimum wage. And not only did we do it, we gave you better than we promised. That is a government that cares about you. That is a government that understands that a young person's first job needs to pay them what they can live on, that people's jobs must, must be able to meet their needs. This Barbados Labour Party cares. We went even further in expanding the space for young people. We created the Youth Advance Corps. And that, that COVID did put a stop to, a pause in. But we are going to restart that program. We are going to make sure that those who need to be together, learning values, learning training, working in a community, working in unison, will have that opportunity again. Those kinds of programs improve not only the lives of those who are in it, it improves the lives of those in the communities that they're living. Those kinds of programs improve everyday lives. That is what Barbados Labour Party is about a better life for our people.
and not just an hour as in Barbados Labour Party, an hour as in Barbadians. Because I am confused when the Democratic Labour Party wants to tell you that they are for Barbadians. I want to tell you about a situation that happened a few days ago. I and a few people were canvassing an area and we butt up on some members of the Democratic Labour Party. It is not the first time. So while we took our papers and decided we are going to continue on, we're not going to, 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 to be, 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 be scared, we're not going to turn back, we're going to continue on, and they will do their thing and we will do ours because we are respectful of each other. The people canvassing for the other side proceeded to turn on music. Hard, hard, hard. Proceeded to give explicits to us. Proceeded to intimidate because I was with a group of women and they were a group of men to holler and jeer at us. That is, could not be the party that is ready to lead this country. Where we have issues where we must teach young people to work together. We must teach young people to be able to disagree and still live peaceably. That could never be a party that is ready to be in power. And I had to lead those women and tell them we are not interested in whatever they have to say. We have a bigger mission. We must make sure the Barbados Labour Party is in power to lead this nation because those same men we are fighting for. We are fighting for every single person in this country. That is the Barbados Labour Party. We will be respectful. We will be assured. But we will be forthright and honest in ourselves. And we will work for the betterment of this country. But the sheer fact, the sheer fact that in other constituencies, you have people taking on these kinds of attitudes says to me that the Democratic Labour Party is hungry. And I don't know what they're hungry for. I can only assume it is what Mia has put in the treasury. But you can't get it. That is for the Barbadian people. That is to ensure our future. That is to make sure, to make sure that while we are battling COVID, people in this country can still eat. That is to make sure that if we get hit by another hurricane, that there can be money in the treasury to rebuild homes, to lend a helping hand. But most important to me, that is money is there to ensure that Barbadian youths have a future. That money is there to ensure that we can continue to create Barbadians that we can be proud of. I am proud of Ernesta, a woman who sets up her stall every day at six in the morning and works from sunup to sundown to ensure she can contribute to her children and her grandchildren. I am proud of Ernesta. When I stand on a stage, I stand for Ernesta. When I stand on a stage, I stand for Jade. A young man who has had some troubles in his life, but he understands that he needs to be on a better path. He understands that he has a girl child now, and he must do better for her. A man who understands there are opportunities open in this country, which were not open under the Democratic Labour Party. When I stand on a stage, I stand for Jade. When I stand on a stage, I stand for Maya. A young woman, so smart, so full of hope for her future, so full of self-assuredness that with Mia and the BLP, she will be able to become a doctor someday. She will be able to be like Dr. Brown, a woman who serves her community. She will be able to make sure that not only her mother, but her next door neighbor, the woman down the street, the stranger she does not know has a hand somewhere to go, someone to help. These are the kinds of people we stand on each and every stage and plead for. So when I ask you for a vote, I don't just ask you for myself. I ask you for these people. I ask you for this country. 
But most of all, I ask you for you. I ask you for your vote for the Barbados Labour Party because you need help. And this Barbados Labour Party has been helping this country through. Mia Amor Motley, each time she speaks to you, does so with love. Does so because this country has nurtured her like it has nurtured me. This country is all that we have. And we can let no one, no one who does not have our best interests as a country at heart, take us down the wrong path again. Haven't we had enough of that? Haven't we had enough of people who are hungry for power but not hungry to put food in your bellies? Have we not had enough of people who want to prance up and dance up but when it's time to knock on their door are not interested in your future? Not interested in even pointing you in the right path? No. I ask you wholeheartedly to reject the Democratic Labour Party. I ask you with no, no doubt in my mind that the Barbados Labour Party is here for you. That the Barbados Labour Party has seen you through four crises because we did not only have COVID, ash, and the hurricane, we had to reverse the Democratic Labour Party's disgusting and ineptitude manner of running this country. We are continuing to see us through crises, but not alone, not just as a government, as a people. Together with the Barbados Labour Party, we can pull through COVID. We can pull through any crisis. So please, remember when you place your ex, it is for you. It is for your future. It is for a better life for all Barbadians. It is for progress. And no one who cannot stand on a stage and tell you about policies and programs should ever be in power. Vote for the Barbados Labour Party. Vote for you. Thank you so much and have a good night. Mia is Bessie I know you agree with me. The rest of them ain't ready. And that ain't too good for we. But Mia and BLP, the future for this country. So January 19th, I vote in BLP. If you love Barbados as bad as me. Vote for BLP. Mia and the team BLP. Vote for BLP. You want the best for this country. Vote for BLP. Well, Barbados Labour Party is for we. Thank you, Shanika roberts Odell, for that very dynamic start to this evening's meeting. We are rolling along, and I have the pleasure, really, in introducing the next person who really went to school with me. We were in the same class. We tried our hands at cricket. I suspect that I edged him out on many occasions. <laughs> He has been a teacher of long standing. He served as manager of the Barbados Industrial Development Corporation's office in New York. He also served as a vice counsel and the trade representative for Barbados. I can tell you that he did an outstanding job in that part of the world for Barbados. He is an outstanding citizen in this community. He is very highly respected, and parents from near and far seek him out on a regular basis to teach their children. In fact, he has not turned his school, his home, into a part-time school, so to speak. He teaches mathematics and the principles of business, and the pass rate is astronomical. So, ladies and gentlemen, a man from this community, a man who is known almost in every household 
and whose record of service is well known and there for all to see. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Henderson Clark to the stage. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here this evening to speak to you on behalf of Sonia Brown and the Barbados Labour Party. Myself and George did sit in the same class and did sit in the same team. But I was an opening batsman and he was a bowler. I don't know who made the greater contribution to the team, but I am here this evening to be on the same team as George and to make the case for the candidacy of Dr. Sonia Brown. I am a man of this community, and I have my ear to the ground on a regular basis. And I understand that Dr. Brown's opponent has been in this community, and that he has been starting all of his presentations with that good oldie goldies childlike song, Have You Seen Her? And I want to base my presentation to you here tonight on just that, Have You Seen Her? Now, I understand that the political culture of Barbados really is for the electorate to want to see personally their representative. But more important to me and more important to all of us should be not to see the candidate personally, but to see what that candidate is doing to make our lives better, to make our livelihoods better and to make this constituency a better place in which to live. And I want to say to you tonight that Michael Lashley should not only play the refrain to that oldie goldie song, that he should play the second verse of that song. And the second verse of that song says that I see her face everywhere I go, on the streets or in the picture show. Have you seen her? I have seen her, and I will tell you why I have seen her. And he should ask, and he should even go further, I should say. And he should analyze the lyrics of that particular song. And if he do a proper analysis, he would see that the writer of those lyrics was looking for the woman that he was writing about because he wanted to tell her how much he loved her. He had left such a lasting, she had left such a lasting impression on him that he searched her out 
everywhere on the streets. He even went and sat in the park to see if he would see her passing, just to tell her how much he loves her. And we should look for Sonia Brown and tell her how much we love her for what she has done to make this community a better place in which hey, to live. Hey, 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 hey. And I want to say to you tonight that it was untrue, it was hypocritical even, for him to even suggest that a woman who lives in the constituency who work every day in the constituency in her medical practice to provide a medical service to the old, to the young, to the not so old, to the not so young. A person who has two, not even one, constituency offices in this St. Philip North. We should be looking for her to tell her how much we love her. And I recall what it was like in 2018. In 2018, with our water supply here in this community. In 2018, you go to take a bath, the water off. You go to cook the water off. You go to flush the toilet, the water off. And I told you in 2018 that a vote for Sonia Brown and a vote for the Barbados Labour Party would be part of the solution to this war that we were having. And you voted for her. What is the situation now? The situation now is that we still have a few niggling problems, but you know what they, were, what they are? They are of a different nature, of the opposite nature. Sometimes at night, when the water pressure gets too high, it bursts the pipes along there by me. It bursts the pipes there by NASA. That is a different problem. But we don't have that serious, chronic water shortage problem anymore. That is Sonia Brown. That is her face. <laughs> and when you are getting better social services in this country, you ought to be glad to have a person like Sonia Brown working on your behalf. A better service, far better service. Those of us who traveled on the public transportation and used Route 12 would remember from Bridgetown coming up to right here on this star map, right here. And you would remember that you had to pass from Hastings up to Maxwell. And in moving from Hastings to Maxwell, you know what you had? You had the bus driving through all the sewage and slush and filth. And as you drive along, what you were doing is just looking at the tourists that we invited here, invited here to spend with us invited here to enjoy our beaches, our hotels on the south coast, some of the best in Barbados. And all they are doing is hopscotching around, hopscotching around the filth. And I told you that a vote for Sonia Brown would alleviate that problem. And what is the situation now? You drive along the south coast and all you are having and all you're doing is smelling the sea breeze. Well paved roads, 
well-paved roads. And all you can do is say hello to the tourists. Had it not been for this COVID, you know what we would have seen on that south coast. Transportation. Cast your minds back to what it was like in this particular constituency of ours. Just cast your minds back to 2018 and you would realize that people were waiting three and four and five hours to get a bus. I remember one day going from home down to Sky Mall and as I passed right there, right there at the corner, Apple Hall, there were about a dozen people waiting on a bus. Went to Sky Mall and back. And when I get back, they were still there at the bus stop waiting on a bus. And you know who was the minister responsible for transportation at that time? The minister of transportation was none other than the same Michael Lashley. He should have had an indictment. And I know you, the people of St. Philip North, would do that for me. Hey, 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 What is the situation now? Today, as you walk out from home, every 15 minutes, you can have a public transportation bus. If it isn't a transport board, electrically operated bus, it's going to be a TAP bus, a ZR, or a yellow minibus. That is what the situation is now. Have you seen her? Sonia Brown. That is Sonia Brown. And you, do, you can ride now in comfort. And you don't have to be packed in like sardines in a can. You don't have to be because of Sonia Brown and the Barbados Labour Party. Garbage collection in this own community of ours here in Merricks. I recall when in 2018, sometimes three weeks, four weeks pass and you don't have a garbage collection. Garbage pile up as high as the house. And rats and mice and centipedes and any vermin that you could think of roaming the place. Today, every single Monday as God sent, the garbage is collected. And we have one of the best garbage collection teams anywhere in Barbados. And it was then that when you asked them what was the problem that we couldn't get a garbage collection, you know what they would tell you? They would tell you, look, there are only 12 12 trucks to service the whole of Barbados and we don't have a truck for this route. So we have to wait until one becomes available. We have to wait and one comes off another route before you can have your garbage collected. That is not the situation now. And I told you that if you voted for Sonia Brown in the Barbados Labour Party, that they would find a solution to that. Proper representation, people. Proper representation. And he walking around a constituency, camouflaging people. Have you seen her? Have you seen her? You know, you couldn't see him. 
because he was somewhere hiding. Had to be hiding. Had to be under a rock somewhere. In fact, all other 29 of them, he plus the other 29, not a word anybody heard from them after they were defeated in the last elections. None of them. And all of them are out now. All of them out since our Prime Minister has called elections. Natural disasters. I have lived through from Hurricane Janet in 1955. I went through Hurricane Andrew. I went through Hurricane Thomas. I went through the volcanic eruption of 1978. And people, let me tell you, none of them was easy. But never in my lifetime have I seen so many natural disasters happening in such a, a, a concentrated little space of time. In the last three years, you know, this government of ours had to deal with freak storm, Hurricane Elsa, the Soufre eruption. And after each one, the Barbados Labor Party, Sonia Brown, to the rescue. You remember when Ash piled up as high as the ankle on our streets here, on our streets right here in Marix. And a day or two after, All you can see along here is white bag after white bag after white bag of ash. Even if you drive along Carrington now, you will see some of them there pile up in the bushes. Sweet, clean, clean streets. And if that wasn't enough, immediately following that, a debushing program, a debushing program. The, Along the streets, you can see clean. We can invite the world to come into this community now. It wasn't like that in 2018. That is Sonia Brown. That is the Barbados Labor Party. And how you can answer. I want to talk a lot. Of, I want to talk about that personally. Because the morning following Hurricane Elsa, my landline ringing, my cell phone ringing at the same time, and I frightened as hell to answer either one because I'm thinking the worst for my friends and my relatives. And when I answered the landline, Sonia Brown answered the cell phone. Sonia Brown, what, as soon as we get the all clear, I want you to get out there, get out there and see what damage is done in your area. And I walk from Lighters Hill to Red House. I made notes of everything I saw, came back and reported, and as soon as I reported, Sonia Brown to the rescue. Went to every single house that had damage. What can I do? How can I help? This is what I will do. And if you doubt me, look up the road right there at the corner of Pete Bay. You will see the evidence of it. Sonia Brown to the rescue. Have you seen her? I have seen her, and I know that you have seen her too. And if Michael wasn't hiding, he would have seen, because he wouldn't have to go far, he would have seen her too. 
Because if you walk up here, past Sonia Brown's office and turn right, the road that brings you all the way around to the Savories, well paved, well manicured, clean on the sides. That is Sonia Brown, and that was his own family house. And if that wasn't enough, where his constituency office is opposite Royal Palm. A road in disrepair. Drive on it now, sweet. That is Sonia Brown, that is her face. And when you see them kind of services, it is reflective of the representative of the constituency. So how can he see even if he had gone down by his family in Bayfield and he had gone past Marleyville, Butcher's Pike, out to Bayfield, road nice, sides clean, well the bush. Lord have mercy. He hasn't seen her. That is reflective of her face. That is Sonia Brown and the Barbados Labour Party people. And if you want to go a little further, remember the people at Long Bay and up to there by the Army Church. Remember that. People were asking when this road going to finish, what time they're going to this road, no, they're going to finish this road. And you elected Sonia Brown as your representative and bam, bam, road done, dusted, done and dusted. Sonia Brown. That is our representative people. And that is who we will be voting for come election on the 19th. I happened to pass by Michael Lashley's meeting on Saturday night. I was on my way home and I decided that I was gonna stop and hear some of what I had to say. And as I stopped, one of his own people came to me and said, Quartz boy, I hear, but you see me? I ain't voted for here, no. I ain't voted for here, no. Sonia has done more in three and a half years than he did in 15 years as the representative of the constituency. And he had 15 years plus 15 years plus nearly 20 years in the constituency and you know what he was saying that he had a vision for the constituency and i won't tell you what he said his vision was because wherever he was hiding the rock he was hiding under like he had no internet no no wi-fi oh lord Because you know that he was saying the main plank of his vision was a mobile library. A mobile library, people. Libraries went out when I was a boy, when me and George, the boys at St. Catherine in class two. His vision is a mobile library at, at a time when the Barbados Labour Party manifesto is addressing the digitizing of every, the digitizing of your passport, your license, your online applications for everything. If he had come and said that he was going to get a mobile technological service to help people to become technology savvy, I could understand that. But we're not going back there. People, come the 19th. Come the 19th. I have to wrap up now. You have some choices in St. Philip. In St. Philip West, you have K. McConney. In St. Philip South, 
You have the man. In the where is the man? And come the 19th day of January, in this constituency, do not waste your vote. Your vote is sacred. Your vote is not for sale. Your vote is not for rent. So the only name on that ballot paper that you will see is Sonia Elaine Brown. I'm obliged to you. Good night and God bless you. Thank you very much, Henderson Clark, for that very stirring address, which put in proper perspective the stewardship of our candidate, Dr. Sonia Brown. And of course, you can always take to heart the words of Henderson Clark. Now, in this general election, we all know that leadership matters. Leadership is important because at time, in times like these, with so much uncertainty across the world, this little island of Barbados, with 289,000 souls as its population, must have hope. We must believe that the future is worth looking forward to that it is important for us to continue to work to build up this country, to ensure that the social and economic development program is maintained. And without good visionary leadership, that will always be in doubt. Without a leader having the courage necessary, the country will begin to doubt itself we can be justly proud that in Mayor Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, we have someone who has gained the respect and admiration of the world by her outstanding performance in international fora, be it the United Nations, UNCTAD, Scotland, and other places. And we know that world leaders look up to her because they know that she is strong and she is decisive. She is of the highest possible intellect. And when you see Mayor Motley, you see a person that we can be proud of. This little country has had outstanding leaders over the years. And I can say without fear of contradiction that she is the most outstanding prime minister we have had over the years. It gives me the greatest pleasure, therefore, to ask you to join me in welcoming your Prime Minister, the next Prime Minister of Barbados, Mayor Amor Martley. Please come forward, Madam Prime Minister.
Good night, good night. It seemed like just the other day I was speaking from this same spot in Merritt's. But we are here again. And I am happy to be here because there is always a combination of a fresh breeze and a warmth of spirit when I come to St. Philip. And I want to thank, first of all, you, the people of St. Philip North, for having the confidence and placing it in Sonia Brown when last you went to the polls on the last occasion. The truth is that I didn't know you were giving me a diamond. And Sonia Brown has turned out to be that person in our parliament who represents her constituency in the way that you anticipated that she would by doing the things that you expect her to do for and on behalf of the people of St. Philip North. Sonia is fiercely independent, but never disruptive of attaining the objective necessary to bring progress to her people and for us, for the people of Barbados. And Sonia, I want to salute you because it is not easy to be able to do what you have done in the last three and a half years. Retaining that sense of independence, bringing always a scientific approach that is your training and inclination, and being able always still to reflect the empathy that is inherent in you as a doctor, but above all else, as a human being. And you know, it is significant that when I talk to people across this parish, there are those who would want to typify and typecast Sonia. And she will tell you that from day one, the only thing I have asked of her is to be true to herself. To be true to herself. Because I know that in being true to herself, she is going to bring the level of representation that she has brought. You know, when I reflect on the breakfast program that she has started, Involving herself. <laughs> you understand what I'm just telling you? It's only got one child. But she has involved herself in being able to prepare breakfast for children across this constituency to make sure that the learning that they need to do when the day come, that they're in a position to do and to receive. She could easily outsource it. She could easily say, somebody else do it. But Sonia has put herself at the center of it day in and day out. And that reflects a level of commitment and caring that is not often seen, regrettably, in modern day Barbados. But it goes further. Her independence has meant that she doesn't only depend on the resources of the government of Barbados. When St. Mark's School and the deplorable state in which it was left, and Michael Lashley has a lot to answer for, and I can come to him shortly. <sighs> Sonia was not prepared to just wait and hope that this would be done in the normal trajectory and way things are done and looking at whether land is available and what the government has the money to spend on the land. No. Sonia took it upon herself to go and seek out people who have the goodwill of this parish at heart and to ask them if they would be prepared to get the ball rolling by way 
of donating the land so that the new school at St. Mark's could be built so that your children could go into a school giving them the best that they can have. And I am happy tonight that that process is fully underway and that the donation will be executed because as a former Minister of Education, I know what it is to have competing demands. In my day, it was over 80 primary schools. I believe it is about 60 now. And therefore, you cannot naturally assume that yours will always be at the top of the list. But the innovation and the in initiative shown by Sonia is that she was not prepared for the children of this constituency to have to go to a St. Mark's school and to be denied of the best possible opportunities and that she would do whatever she needed to do above the law. And that is important to say in this particular election. To be able to ensure that we can get on with that project as soon as possible. And why do these things matter? I have said night by night by night in this campaign that the clear difference between this party in government and the Democratic Labour Party is that we believe in bringing services to the people. The St. Joseph Outpatients Clinic and the St. Andrew Outpatients Clinic were done. But what many of you may not know is that work is also being done at the St. Philip District Hospital and the Body Clinic, recognizing that the conditions which we inherited were less than acceptable for you, the people of St. Philip. And I am aware of it. Because in preparation for meeting with other officials in December, I took a full brief from the Ministry of Health, and I'm aware that the repairs will finish by the end of March of this year. Now, a government that cares finds the money and makes the priority that is necessary to ensure that the people of this parish can continue to access decent services in decent conditions. But it doesn't stop there. Many of you may not be aware that this lady has been the champion as the chairman of the National Assistance Board of the Community Elder Care Program that goes beyond the normal NAB program. And what are we really trying to do there? We recognize that we need to provide support in our communities to our senior citizens, particularly in the middle of a pandemic when isolation can cause you, even as a young person, to feel out of it, far less as a senior person who may not be as mobile as young people. And this government, even though in the middle of an IMF program, put together this program so that your parents and grandparents and aunts and great aunts and uncles and great uncles could receive the benefit of the elderly care monitoring program, particularly those who live alone. And so much do we believe in the program that we have committed to expanding it as an article of faith in how we deal with our senior citizens in this country. And let me explain why. It costs us over $25,000 a month to deal with a senior citizen in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And regrettably, there are patients that are left there and abandoned by some families. 
Sometimes not out of ill will. Sometimes because they have nowhere to send them if they are to go to work when the day come. The cost at the geriatric hospital is $5,500. Significantly less, but you're constrained by the spaces at the geriatric hospital and the St. Philip District Hospital and the Gordon Cummins one which is going to be integrated. And until we build the new geriatric hospital, those are the limitations. And we have an alternative care of the elderly program. And we have committed to reviewing the rates which have not been reviewed for a long, long time. But also working with them to expand the number of places because we understand the constraints, particularly when people have no one at home to take care of their elderly parents or grandparents. That is why, in the interim, the program that Sonia has presided over as chairman of the National Assistance Board is so, so important, not just to the people of St. Philip, but island-wide. And this is the kind of heart and representation that I am proud as leader of this government to be associated with. Because when I contrast it to what otherwise passes for an attempt in this particular campaign again, I see a Michael Lashley who has come out of hibernation, out of hiding, and he has the temerity to play a song about, have you seen her? And she had the courage and presence of mind to answer him and say, look my hair, Mr. Lashley. Oh, Lord. Power to you, my dear. That is what you call a googly that get him out. And you are going to make sure that he's truly out on Wednesday when you vote him out and vote for Sonia Brown. I want to know, have you seen him? Did you see him when Hurricane Elsa came? Because when I came up in this parish going to houses with Sonia that had been damaged, couldn't see, hear, nor smell him. When we came here two weeks before with the freak storm, I didn't see no Michael Ashley. They hear him, didn't feel his presence. And I ask you tonight if you are so caring and wondering about where she was, where were you when the ash fall came? Where were you when the Ashfall threatened to mash up all the equipment in people's houses and to collapse people's roofs? Where were you, Michael Ashley? You're supposed to be tall and strong. Why didn't you put on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and come out and help people? Or is that beneath you? Or is it that you were only out here for political opportunity? You understand the contrast that I'm painting for you tonight between Sonia Brown and Michael Ashley? You know, if it was about BMWs, he would be there. I have come to St. Philip North tonight to represent a good woman. And a good woman who has come to Parliament to do exactly what you sent her to Parliament to do. To represent your interests, to speak, even if sometimes she is speaking independently of her colleagues. And I hear all kinds of nonsense about my leadership. 
But the leadership that I have brought to this party and to this government accommodates the independence of a Sonia Brown or a Trevor Prescott. Because at the end of the day, even though they may want to get to Bridgetown by different roads, we want to get to the same destination. And that is a fundamental point. This is the parish of Bussa. This is a parish that led to the 1816 revolt. And we understand the fiercely independent nature of the St. Philip people. We joke about it in Calypso. But we understand the rugged and independent nature, George, of this parish. And I have said tonight that whether it was Cappy Greenwich, God bless Cappy, a good and decent man, or whether it has been Sonia Brown, you have had more representation and more things done in this parish. You know, I laugh. You know where the Democratic Labour Party going to launch the, the, the manifesto tomorrow night? Is Cappy Greenwich that do that? It is Cappy Greenwich that did that with the Barbados Labour Party. And I can go through this parish and the majority of things, in fact, Mr. Clark just now was talking about the roads. The roads that were done at the last minute. And it took a Barbados Labour Party government to come and finish these roads. And yet Michael Lashley was Minister of Transport for all them years. Five years. Have you seen her? You have not only seen her, you have seen all of her good works. And instead, what have I seen of Michael Lashley? I heard the evidence in the Public Accounts Committee. I heard it with the Transport Board. I understand that I need to learn more about transmissions and how they work and how much they cost. Oh, Lord. I understand these things. But what I also understand is that Sonia, in working with the others in my team, have made it easier for you, the people of St. Philip, to live. You heard just now about the police certificate of character. How many of you would have been disadvantaged before? Movel, that's you. I thought so. All oh, right, Daddy. I miss your book launch. Congratulations. Thank you. How many of you have had a police certificate of character to get in order to get a job? They tell you come to work Monday morning or a week Monday. And under Michael Lashley and the Democratic Labour Party, you would have to pray and see who you could get to call a shot for you to get a certificate of character in this country. You would have to get a shot call. And more often than not, you couldn't get it in under four to six weeks. Through K. McConney, who is running in St. Philip West, working on behalf of all of us in this government, we have been able to digitize all kinds of services and we're still doing it so that you can go now online and get the certificate of character and to be able to go and get the job that you're looking for. Driver's licenses. Payment of all kinds of taxes. And you know why this is important? Because many of you would use a half tank of gas to go to town to have to pay a lot of these bills. And now you can stand in your house, stand on your phone, stand on your tablet, stand on your computer, 
and pay and continue to cook or continue to lime or continue to take care of the children. I don't have to waste out money to go and do things. That is money back in your pocket. I, 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 and you know, I ask myself, on what basis is Michael Lashley coming back to you to embarrass the good name of the people of St. Philip North? No. No. And then I hear all of the talk about a glorious decade. Is this the glorious decade that had all your garbage piling up? That had the sanitation down to nine trucks so that the people of St. Philip could hardly get a truck to collect garbage when the week come or two weeks come? And now far from that, you don't only have regular collection, you got garbage bins that come in now that belong to each household. And if somebody thief it, you can track it because it got the RFID chips in it. You got the recycling bins about to come. The stories. Look, the bus is coming through there. I can't even hear that bus. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Going to be a field. You, you understand? It amazes me every time I am talking at a public meeting and one of them electric buses pass through. For 30 years on a platform, every time a bus about to come near to a meeting, you just got to do so. Calm down. I ain't let the chicka 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 go through. Now I can't even hear the bus coming. That's a lie. A lie. In the middle of an IMF program. Left with debt. Choking us. And we sort out the debt. We pay back the people all the money, including the people in St. Philip. All the money the government of Barbados had owed them. And still turn around and do for the people. All the parents that worry about whether my child can get home on time before dark. And if they can be safe having to walk from the bus stop in at night. All the garbage. The roads. The first thing I did, Michael Lashley, you left a Ministry of Public Works without equipment. Within two weeks of coming to government, we committed to give Public Works $10 million to buy equipment. The choice is clear. It could not be clearer. I have a lady in Sonia Brown who raises the issues legitimately on your behalf. She doesn't mince her words. And she's a plain talker and lets us know what you need. And I respect that because I too am a plain talker as you know. And then I have a lady in the form of Kay McConney who is then in a position to fix many of the issues that Sonia has raised and that need to be fixed in order for us to be able to carry this country forward. I talked about the certificate of character and the payment of taxes and the other things for digitization. Why? Because all of us nowadays, look, he taking pictures of me on this. I can do my, all my government work on this. You can do your work on this. And if we have government still in the 20th century in an analog environment, and the rest of you in the 21st century in a digital environment, the country is not going to go anywhere. But I go further. This is a parish that loves both outdoor activity and culture. And my government has now committed to the building of 15 mini stadia across Barbados, across every parish. And why? 
Because your children deserve opportunities. The sportsmen deserve opportunities. And the people who want to do a little promotion, if you have a mini stadium that has a fence and some bleachers, Michael, what you can do? Charge. Charge a $5 or a $10. And all of a sudden, communities and individuals and communities can be in control of their destiny. I know what I'm talking about. I launched, along with Randy Harris and others, a Lime Pelican football challenge, semi-professional, paying people to play football, paying them to win. And we believe that if we give our people opportunity, that they will do it. What did you get from Michael Ashley instead? A bunch of houses up at river. Left derelict. Not completed. And the National Housing Corporation has had to discount some of the prices. Because you can't go and sell a house that shut up for three or four or five years at the same price as if it is a brand new house. A house that never get water run through the pipes. A house where the boards get weathered and nobody can paint them. This is what you were left in that glorious decade. You were left desolation. You were brought to the brink of devaluation. And you were left to the winds of destruction even as even as you ask them to put people first in this country. So my friends, I have come to St. Philip North with a simple request. Sonia Brown has brought a level of dignity to the representation of the people of St. Philip North that was not there under Michael Lashley. Sonia Brown cares whether it is children, whether it is senior citizens, or whether it is normal adults, that is her day-to-day -day work to care as a doctor. But her day-to-day -day inclination as a human being is also to care. And I can think of no better person to earn your vote to be given your vote. And, and let me be very clear, I don't want support. I want votes. Because support is not votes. Flour is not cake, flour is not bake, and flour is not bread. It only becomes a valid vote if it goes in the ballot box between 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening and it can't touch the lines. But if you believe that this government has turned the corner and taken this country into the right space in spite of COVID, 19 months before COVID is what we had and 24 months under COVID is what we endured. And in spite of all of that, we have kept Barbadians alive. We have kept this economy afloat with difficulty, but we have done it. And we believe that this year is going to be the year that will allow us to see even more a construction boom. And let me give you the difference between a Michael Lashley and a Richard Seeley. And a Ian Gunnagel and a Mia Motley. We are about to have roads done in the Scotland district from the Chinese. The last government had Sam Lord's Castle financed by the Chinese. They agreed that the Chinese labor would come in and constitute the majority of workers on that site. 
under this road program we have said we thank you we welcome you but we cannot afford to give you the jobs on the site working on these roads because Barbadians must have them Barbadians need jobs and why because you must not be afraid to negotiate strong and that is the difference between this government and the last government I make no bones about it. The last government could have gone to Vineyard and solved the problem with water going up to St. John and going right up to St. Joseph. But it did nothing. These are the things that make a difference to the lives of the people of St. Philip. And when I say to you that a housing revolution is coming, a silent housing revolution is coming. It is coming to the people of St. Philip as well. I'm not talking about Michael going there at Merrick's and, and breaking ground for a project that never happened. Huh? You remember that? Harlequin? And I can go on and on and on about the things that cause you to hurt your head with the quality and level of representation with the embarrassment with the indignity and then you go hiding for three and a half years my friends I know what it was to have lost an election Michael Ashley and the only body that lose an election I lost an election in 1991 and do you know the election result came in about 2 o'clock in the morning? And you know, by midday, the next day, he was back in the constituency, having lost, and continued to work. And ironically, ironically, it was three years and nine months. <laughs> you understand? Almost the same time frame. As between May 2018 and January 2022. And I found myself, this is not hearsay. I found myself with Vivian Goodman, God bless her soul. Back in the constituency by midday the next day. And working with the people. And creating the programs. And getting the bonds. Not the kind of activity Michael was interested in making money. I said, when? I said, how long? But I know that if you want to make money, you can still make money and come and find time to go for people when people are suffering. Tropical storm, Kirk came before the freak storm. Where was he then? These are the questions you have to ask yourself. Because if what you want is representation, then Sonia Brown is your woman. Hey, 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 hey. And if what you want is show, then Michael Lashley is the center of the show. But we can work out a deal with him and Eswick on CBC for that. <laughs> Serious. So it is my great pleasure tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Sonia, come. Because I want the pleasure of introducing the next member of Parliament for St. Philip North if you come out in your numbers on Wednesday. And I want to tell you, as Sonia will, that her independence of thought is what caused me to leave Bridgetown first and foremost and go to her house and ask her to run. And I knew that I was asking for a big, big sacrifice because she has a small daughter, a daughter whom she loves, a daughter whom she will do everything for. But if she can find time to still represent you and take care of her small daughter, you have to ask Michael Lashley what happened with you. The question should not be, have you seen her? But the question should be, 
Watch the example of her. Watch the example of Sonia Brown. This is the lady who came to me and always telling me, Mia, BM, this road, that road. Three houses park, we waiting and getting the signatures to rename it after Florence Nash. One of the proudest citizens of the parish of St. Philip and one of the few people to sit as a member of the federal parliament with Grantley Adams. I'm told they used to call her brown sugar. And I didn't hear that from you all. I heard that from my grandfather. Because she represented my grandfather's party way back then. So my friends, I have the greatest of pleasure tonight to introduce and to commend to you for your election to Parliament so that we may continue our journey of transformation of this parish and of this country. <laughs> Sonia Brown is a woman of class and deserves to be your next Member of Parliament. Good night and God bless. Thank you very much. Sonia, over to you, my love. and you run up here. Keep them and you run from her. Beg you do. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Those of you who know me know I like a little humor and a little fun, but to break the ice a little bit, I, I, I wrote a prayer. You don't sit behind the opposition leader for so long and not get something rubbing off. So I wrote a little prayer that I want to start my speech with tonight. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this evening to thank you for allowing the Barbados Labor Party administration, ably led by PM Mia, to come this far in three and a half years. But dear Lord, apart from, the, from thanking you and giving you praise I, Sonia Brown, I'm asking for your forgiveness. I'm asking for your forgiveness, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for answering Michael Ashley's question of have you been, have you seen her in the way that I did, Lord Jesus. For you see, Lord, in answering the question, I posted pictures on social media as evidence of my presence in the constituency. But Lord, dear Lord, I ask your forgiveness for including the photo of me in, the New York, in New York buying supplies for the little ones in the constituency. Knowing full well that Lord, Mr. Lashley could not have seen me in New York. Forgive me for that. Thanks for giving me the speed of hand, Lord, to remove the post before he saw it. Dear Lord, as your son said as he took his last breaths on the cross, Allow us to forgive Lashia and Eswick and the rest. But the truth is, Lord, they ain't had no clue before. You said that Jesus said to you, forgive them for they know what, not what they do. They don't have any clue before. Ain't got none now. And I know them and know what they're doing in the future. Forgive them, Lord. Father, Lord, I'm trying to call in Jordan now. Please ask Lashley to stop tearing down my posters. Lord, I know that the DLP used the garbage. They used the garbage on the streets. But now we get enough garbage trucks. Don't overwork the people. Father, Lord, I know that Eswick and the rest were used to the smell of sewage on the streets. But sweet Jesus, help them to stop talking so much in this campaign. <laughs> Dear Lord, take the spirit of gypsiness out of me, Lord. 
this spirit of gypsiness, take it out. Now, y'all know what I mean by gypsiness. Because when Michael said in the media that people come into his office asking for housing solutions, he forget that, that I could see his office in Coles from my office in Coles, Lord. And apart from the fact that his son get that down as soon as it get put up, I know nobody ain't went in there. Oh, Lord God, before I forget, thank Pedro Shepherd for reminding the women of this party that we sexy. That's why we're this dress, you know. So that I could get the compliment too, because it's good when it hit 50 that somebody could tell you that. And finally, Lord, on the 20th of January, next week, Thursday, Lord, please hold up Verla and Eswick and Lashley and Law and Seely. Please hold them up as their knees buckle. Hold them up, sweet Jesus, and teach them, Father. Teach them, Lord, to take the beating and breathe. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that I have broken the ice, it's now, now to get to the seriousness of the matter. And as I said last night, this is getting a little monotonous and tiring. Having to defend myself against the man, basically, that has done nothing in 15 years. You heard the Prime Minister said that when she lost, she got to work. Michael Lashley had this constituency for 15 years. Five of them in opposition. He did nothing then. Ten! Ten years as a Minister of Parliament. Controlling, housing, and MTW Lord. You know this. Michael Lashley saw it fit to ask me, have you seen her? I wish I answered, I think, quite ably. And I have more where them coming from. But as the Prime Minister said, you see the buses? I like to equate myself to these buses. He's the ones from your, the noisy jugger jugger ones, as the Prime Minister said, that you must hear it when it coming, but ain't going away. And I am like that baby that just passed, the silent one, but effective, and plan to get you where you're going. He described me in the newspapers, I can't remember the word, but something to equate as a small fry because the Prime Minister didn't see me fit enough to have a ministry. And you know what? In her wisdom, she did the right thing. She did the right thing. Because although I'm a small fry and ain't got no way, as he says, I think in the three and a half years, I've agitated enough for you and more to come. I think in the three and a half years, the Prime Minister told you, but I'm going to tell you again because I feel the need to defend. The breakfast program supplying three of my five schools. We have a lot of schools out here. Michael actually went to St. Mark's Primary, you know. That school only got looked at shortly before the last election. When we, me, along with the PTA, went in there agitated for the dumping of crap that the day. Agitated, and they bought toilet seats for them. Where was Michael Ashley? Where was Michael Lashley when he was driving around with the donor of the land? Begging hard. Begging hard for the land to put St. Mark's School and maybe to amalgamate another one so that they have the facilities. I found a school that had no platform. Children doing prayers outside in the rain and the sun. Classrooms are already platformed, so no shows, nothing going on. Children being disadvantaged, no real extracurricular activities. Where was Michael Lashley? I fixed that. I'm continuing to fix it. Michael Lashley, the bright man that he is, I saw in the news sometime back that he went in the Carpenters Glade and Parish Land to defend the people, the residents there, against the, the, the bad houses that the Prime Minister has them in. And that won't tickle me. Because the very houses that he defending the residents for, he build them. You got houses there, the steps not connected to the house. You can't tell the difference between the bathroom and the bedroom. Michael Ashley went in there to defend them, you know. I went in once, and thanks to the Minister of Housing, we were able to get most of the complaints, and it's about to go through the board, so houses will be fixed, although the warranty has expired. Jobs, jobs. 
Michael Lashley had a habit of bringing in jobs just before elections. Once he warned these people at home, the Mayor Marley administration not only found jobs during the pandemic when the hotels were mostly unoccupied, we found jobs during that time. People in this very audience, I could see them now, got jobs in the ash cleaning and the bushing programs. They're able to feed their families. And when you can feed your family, the children do better in school. Once the children do better in school, they will rise. They will rise to university education, which was almost stopped by the last administration. Remember that. Michael Lashley got in the media recently and accused us of taking away people land and paying them with bonds. I met a gentleman, he's deceased now, waiting on Michael Lashley to pay him from acquire land. The point is, they need to be paid by bonds because the last administration, they left the money. So we had to give them the promise of the bonds and they will be paid. But this gentleman has not lived to see anything coming in and Michael Lashley's administration had done that. This is Justin Supers over there. It seems, and, and I'm talking about the attitude of the party now. They had three and a half years to get it right. Three and a half years to get it right. But it seems that at the end of the last election, they didn't press stop and rewind. They pressed pause and came back the same day, year, this three, year, three and a half years later, pressing play and come back with the same attitude. I didn't tell the prime minister about this. I didn't tell even my father or the people near to me about this. But I do not appreciate people driving in my office yard a couple days ago when I was busy looking after patients, proceeded to shout outside in an effort to intimidate Sonia Brown. The Prime Minister know that that ain't easy for me. I am not intimidated easily. But when you have two rough looking men driving in your workspace, started shouting and accusing me of things that I have no idea about. If this is an, an attempt to intimidate me, Michael Lashley has lost. Don't send a body at me like that again. Do not say anybody like y'all could take this message. I was offended, but there weren't enough to scare me. I do not like this kind of tactics. If you are encouraging young people in this way, you don't deserve to be back. At the nomination center, the task force had to be called in. Y'all know this? And the funny thing is, the video that was taken was from one of his people, but I don't blame them. I keep saying this. I do not blame the people for this. I blame the leadership. I blame the leadership. If you follow by example, the only body to blame is Mr. Lashley. And I use that term loosely, Mr. These are the things that we need to look at. The COVID situation. Ask yourself if Randall Stroh and company were hit with this COVID pandemic, what would Barbados look like? The amazing thing is that during this pandemic, we were able to work. Hotels shut down, as I said, but people were replaced in work. We got the Ministry of Health involved. We got the COVID unit set up. Harrison Point is something to be proud of that will go on and live. It is true, as the Prime Minister said, I'm a little stubborn sometimes in Parliament. And I have my own opinions on how it was, was treated. But right here and now, I am proud of the efforts that the Barbados Labour Party, the government of today, I am proud of the efforts that we made to control this pandemic. And I urge you to continue staying safe and sticking to the protocols. But as she said, I'm grateful for your support, but the support has to translate to votes. I was happy this time. Last time I ran, it was a few of us that were running. But you know what makes me feel good? That the amount of people that have my back that are walking around this constituency they have almost quadrupled, which means I'm doing something right. It means I am doing something right. Michael Ashley, on the other hand, paying people to take down posters. I wish, I really wish he would wait till the 18th to take down the posters. It would save me the money of paying people to take them down. If we just hold on a little bit, do it on the 18th. But this is the kind of atmosphere. We went through merits the other day, and Michael Ashley had a bram for a spot meeting. The music was low, the party was going on, the cars were there, the drinking was present. This would not be Sonia Brown. I got a lot of slack for 
not hanging out in rum shops. I pass through rum shops. But how would it look as a doctor that I sit in a rum shop, drink drinks till I can't walk. I can't even handle a twist, people. That's the truth. I can't handle a twist. I drank a twist a night and hold on to a pillow till the thing wear off. And that's the truth. How would it look me leaving my office at 2 o'clock now after complaining to an alcoholic not to drink? Drive at the rum shop, he goes out and see the same man. These are things you have to stick to what you know because a leper don't change the spots. The paint does wash off eventually. Imagine me going in a rum shop pretending that I like that. Can't keep it up for these three and a half years. I would be a fraud. This is like my Kalashi. He couldn't keep it up. He could not keep it up after he was voted out. I didn't even get a congratulations from the man yet. Maybe we'll get one this thing, because he will lose. But he cannot keep up the attitude. So don't let him fool you and figure that some money could spend. But you got to think about money to spend on big drinks that you're going to pee out in the toilet. Money might spend on big food that can end up in the toilet a day or two later. These things don't last. You want somebody that is sustainable and will fight for you for a lifetime once she is able. And you have found that in me, people. You have found that in me. I am concerned about the account of Michael Lashley with respect to the Public Accounts Committee and the Transport Board. As my friend John King said last night, you can see the evidence of one. Not so far from here, there's a lovely yellow house. I can see that. It clear with our part way. But I ain't find the bus yet. We talk about it for lengths and PSC, and nobody can tell me. I can't remember the license number, BM22 something. Can't find the bus yet. These things he needs to answer the public for, though. All those buses were paid out of your hard taxpayers' money. He can't get away with this. And when you're talking about integrity in public life, Michael Lashley has no idea what that means. When you talk about standing in parliament and fighting, fighting for the children here, he has no idea. When I stand in parliament and fight for the VAT to be removed from certain item, items that women need and children need and the average man need, where was Michael Lashley? I could tell you he was there when the government of that day decided to stop tuition payments. He was there. He was there in parliament sitting quietly, not a boy in nothing but I, I. Oi. He was not representing you. The fact is, and I'm happy to say, your children grow up, you know. Mine is here, they're trying to get on to do homework, but your children grow up. They don't stay small forever, and it has to be a forward thinking government to get you there. When we have a government to start at birth and take off the VAT fund diapers, we have a government that sustain free education in primary school with free lunches in primary school. We have a government that continued in secondary school to provide free lunches as well to those who need. We have a government that made provisions that every child and every household has an opportunity. In other words, the playing field is level, have an opportunity to get their degrees. And some of them move on to get their masters, both in the Caribbean and out of the Caribbean. That's where scholarships come in. We have a government that sees to it that when you're done, finished school, hopefully there are jobs waiting for you. Because if the, value, the money had the value, our dollar had the value, we'd be in even more trouble. This is the truth. But from birth to almost death. So you get the job as a young adult. And now, now I'm seeing in the manifesto, good news for those young couples who are building for the first time. There's a $3,000 rebate when you start building a house for you, which you can spend on the finishings, furnishings, any kind of shins. But Michael Lashley and the last government have done that. So we pass young adulthood, cause they all, and that's important, because they always say you visit a mother-in-law, you don't live with a mother-in-law. So she got you to housing. When you got the house now, we have plans to put on solar, solar electricity, uh, what was it, solar panels that you could get electricity. So you can imagine the electric bill that is half of what it used to be or less. So we gone from baby to teenager to young adulthood. We keeping up the NAS, which was bound to be depleted after the last administration. So when you retire, the money you put in, and the old people had an increase in pensions when we were here. So that's taking care of the older people. That's taking care of the retirees. 
And lo and behold, the brilliance of the administration, of which I speak now. So it for fit to put a program in place that these elderly people can be taken care of in their golden years. We are putting people out there, and some of you have jobs in that program, even the dog coming to listen to me. Some of you have jobs in that program where you look after, it was a spy for Michael, you think? He gone back with the message. Where you can now look after all people who live alone. The prime minister said it, and I know a little more medicine than she does. This is where people reach dementia quicker if they don't have company. This is where people will fail to eat if they don't have somebody to keep the company and cook food for them, prepare a light meal. We have done that with the National Assistance Board and the Elder Care Program. But the NAS when you're dead already gives you grants. So this is a government that cares for you. I know, and we have the free polyclinic. So we start at the beginning when you're pregnant. This, this government cares for you and vitamins are now free for those ladies that are pregnant and need the vitamins. So from pregnancy to toddler with diapers, to primary school children with the school lunches that continue, to secondary school children who have the promise of a tertiary education, to tertiary education, to young adulthood with new couples that are getting ready to build their houses or buy their houses, to retirement where we up the pensions for these old people, to the elder care program and the uh, National Assistance Board that after they retire and they need a little help is there. We have covered almost every age group in this administration. I wonder what Michael Ashley would tell you. Michael Ashley cover up, <laughs> he cover up, he cover over, he undercover, all kind of covers. But he has not once, he had a big program, he says he wants to, he has plans for the youth. No, Kadir, if he ain't had plans for the youth in 15 years, how we gonna come up with plans? No. Never once has Michael Ashley ever called me and said, Sonia, cause I know him. Sonia, let me sit down and decide what we doing for this constituency. I am that type. I might be the most um, non-political politician that you can find. I am the type that would be willing to sit down with an opposition or a potential opposition and work out plans for the community. I have no problem with that. He has my number, everybody has my number. Call me and say, let me sit down with a plan. There's nothing wrong with the government working with an opposition, nothing wrong. Even now the prime minister sees it fit that the opposition leader knows what is going on in government. And he's invited to make his contribution in and out of parliament. So ask Michael Ashley, ask yourselves, when next week Wednesday comes, at this time by now you'll be finished casting your vote long time and we'll be counting. Ask yourselves, as I said before, when you go into that, that polling station. From the time you leave home, before you leave home, on the way there, the drive, when you cruising on the nice road from Wiltshire to Three Houses, or you cruising on the road, in, two roads in calls that were fixed, one of them in front of where Michael Ashley's mother live. I saw it to fit, she was my patients too, but I saw it fit that if she were alive, she would have a good road to, to ride on. When you cruising along the road in the two roads in Merritt's or the one in Blaster number two, think about what your where your ex is going. Think about the power you have and how your ex will come in. Think about that. When you walk up the steps to the polling station and sanitize your hands and take your temperature and give in your name and walk to that little booth, think about where you are placing your ex. X and not only think about it, ask yourself why, why am I voting for Sonia Brown? You have heard my record in three and a half years, not only in as a member of parliament, but as a backbencher, where Michael Lashley has done very little in 15 years as a front bencher, as a cabinet minister, who has all the power and all the resources and the opportunity to sit down with the then prime minister and fight for you all. I have the opportunity to sit down with the now Prime Minister, believe it or not, and fight for you all. And my record will show it, and in the next few days you will see more of what I have done. And I will present myself to you as I did. I am the same as I was yesterday, when before I entered politics. I am the same as I am today and after politics, because the truth is politics is a temporary job, we, all, we know this, but I am ready to retire from it yet. 
after politics, I continue, I will continue to build on my legacy of making St. Philip North, Ergo, Barbados, a better place to live. I fought for people, generally, you know this. I fought, fought for people who had poor housing in St. Philip North, fought till I quarrel a little bit. And houses are now being built, houses are now being replaced. I might not have talk about Chinese houses. The point is, it's houses. The point is, it's houses, generally. I am happy for you, by the way. And that continues. After the hurricanes, I went into the communities and where we, we, we handed out tarpaulins, which was a temporary solution. But that went on and many people, a couple of shops nearby that had damages were supplied with material to start their own fixing. And those who did not have resources to fix their own homes, they're now in the process of having them fixed by rural housing and so on. These are the things that I have done and I did not use it as a photo op because it seems that for the opposition, photo ops are very important. Photo ops not that important to me. The nation reports will tell you I tell them don't put me in that picture if I give away something. That is just not in my nature. That is just not in my nature. If I give you, everybody ain't gonna know. By nature, by training, I am a doctor and your business becomes my business, but nobody else's business. So if I build a house for you, I got a house built for you, I ain't gonna tell nobody, it ain't gonna be in the newspaper easily. And I've been warned by my colleagues too, you got to put it out there. But this is my opportunity to do so. Sometimes you have to pick the right time to do things. I picked the right time to squash Michael Lashley's opinion of me that you can't see me. But the point is, you judge a man by his actions. You don't have to see me and meet me. There's 11,000 constituents nearby, nearly for me at Indar. We cannot see everybody, especially when there's a COVID situation out there, and especially with my job, especially where I see COVID, pe people with COVID that I diagnose on a weekly basis sometimes. You want me to come at you with COVID? I do not want to bring for you what you didn't have in the first place. It didn't make sense. We are now in the midst of a pandemic, and God knows how long it will last. You have to forgive me. I'm begging you to forgive me for not being in front of your face, not be me meeting almost 11,000 of you. But I am working on your behalf. Rest assured that I am working on your behalf. So when Michael Ashley stand up, I tell you foolishness, and the truth is I can't cuss you too much because he's usually respectful for me. But the one thing I had issues with, the only thing, the only thing in his campaign that he could come up with for Sonia Brown is have you seen her? I asked himself what else he come up with to accuse me of or to say that I ain't do. One thing, if anybody in this audience to come up with one thing other than have you seen her that Michael Ashley has presented to you other than have you seen her, I will vote for him myself. Are we waiting? Nobody out here? No? There you go. Anybody out there got an answer for me? What about this side? Jalen, you got one? Michael, you got one? But I got enough. I got enough and the evidence is clear what he has not done. If Michael Ashley comes up with something else that I have not done, that the people wanted, I will vote for Michael Ashley. Just now you can see it on, on Instagram or somewhere, they're gonna pick out the clip, I will vote for Michael Ashley. Prepare for it, it can come. But you know the context in which I've said it. He can't accuse me of leaving out the people when COVID hit, cause I saw to myself, I did it myself along with my team to make sure hampers were packaged for you to make sure, of course, with the help of Sandy Lane Trust and other donors to make sure that you had a little vouchers that you could give, get some food stuff or some clothes or some, some supplies for your family, especially the children. I didn't see Michael Ashley. Could there, even the guy he was campaigning for, Simon Allen, he tried. I can give you that. He was in paper handing out about 10 or so, so campers. But I will forgive him because he saw the error of his ways I has now joined my campaign. I ask yourself why people do that. If you could come up with one thing he could accuse me of, I'm voting for him to, uh, next week, Wednesday. 
He can't say help people who cried for these street lights because we have had several street lights approved and several were installed and some more coming. Some are coming just now, so do not think that I ignored your call for street lights. They're coming. So you're about to rise out of the darkness, similar to when you rose out of the darkness three and a half years ago with your vote. Similar to how you exercised your vote last time and decided we didn't want these people no more. But find one thing on Sony Brown that I ain't do. It can be the rose. Palmore Village was left to suffer. I'm going, I went in there already. As soon as I got in elections, that's one of the first roads that we completed. So it can't be Palmore Village. He's still up in there trying to get the people to smoke and drink, but they're smarter than that now. You can only, a child can only be a child for X amount of years. After that, they realize that somebody fooling them. A party, you can only party for X amount of years. After that, you realize a big no and try no is time to manage my family and see that my children are okay. Michael can only carry out to that stage of party and drinking. He cannot say that I did not help where he can. Yes, I keep enough noise in Parliament sometimes, and a lot of people don't like it. I got a message lately from an area in St. Philip that that's a concern of theirs, that I talk too much in Parliament, and they don't look like I'm following the government. Foolishness, you heard the Prime Minister herself. And that I am one of the 14, it went from must be 12 to 14 to 16, the... What was, the, what was the phrase they used? The, the eager 14. I am one of the eager 14. I am eager. I am one of the 29 eager to help. And it will be 30 shortly. Hey, 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 hey. But people have seen through this foolishness. You are bright people. There's a reason we got free education to make sure everybody in this area in this car park, park and beyond who are listening online can think there's a reason you are educated and your grandmother suffered and worked hard to get you through school now you see the the reasoning behind it to get through school that people like my michael lashley can't come and fool you with nonsense can't fool you i know and as I stand here, Michael and, and George, I have to thank you for your work tonight. Uh, Indar and the other speakers that have gone before me and are to come. I am asking you to be sensible about your decision. Sit down in the quiet of the night when you go home and think about my sister now holding a placard to tell me talking too long. So I'm gonna wrap up shortly. But when you sit in the quiet of the night I reflect on today, today's meeting, and the one yesterday, and the one before that, and the one before that. Use a little common sense. If you want telling you you can vote free, that's fine. But use your common sense and your good sense to put your ex, as the Prime Minister says, don't let it touch the line. For that young lady, oh, she pretty though. That young lady on that placard right there. She's gorgeous. I hope I get a compliment from, from Pedro Shepard tomorrow. She's gorgeous. Put your ex for that young lady that you see on a lot of these platters. Don't mind the foolish talk about who ain't got children and who got children. We all, at some stage, did not have a child. Mine, I, 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 got, I gave birth to her at 41 years old. How many people do that? I didn't always have, have a child, but I always helped. I always see the fact that your children were, were taken care of before you have mine. So, next week Wednesday from 6 to 6, get there early if you can. Put the X against the name of that beautiful young lady cross there. And I, I, when I step off here, taking off my jacket, that, that Pedro Shepherd to see that I sexy too. Put your X beside Sonia Brown's name. And I can promise you that my work shall continue. I thank you for your ear, those of you here and online. I appreciate your support, and I look forward to seeing you on election day, day at the polls. Thank you, God bless, and good night from me. She met enough for
shows, but here get no crew. Breakfast program for school children. The bees in the bee, have you like to name them? So if you vote B, you plug in for sure. Women they got need love for what they want no more. Yeah, like she ain't selfish, she ain't greedy. She's always like the poor and the needy. No dirty politics they want when they hear she's a doctor, a mother, and a woman that care. Let me tell you. We voted for who? Money and brown. We voted for who? Money and brown. We voted for who? Money and brown. Be up here and every seat locked down. For I say Philip North, vote BLP. Sonia Brown. You have just heard Dr. Sonia Brown giving you a report on her stewardship as parliamentary representative for St. Philip North. And you can see that she has been working long and hard and steady to represent your interests and to bring about the improvement in the instructural, infrastructural development of St. Philip North. Now we have three speakers left, but I will bring to you a gentleman who is representing Barbados's interests in Miami, Florida at this time, and has been doing a wonderful job representing the Barbadian community in that jurisdiction. Please join me in welcoming Barbados's Council General to Miami, Mr. Newton Val Greenwich. Dr. Brown, I, I was looking for you to uh, retaliate with one of your reggae songs. I don't think they know of your ability as a reggae artist, and nor as a lyricist. Tomorrow, because I thought you would have come tonight with the one, Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Folks. I've been asked to sit in for a short while, and it's a pleasure of mine to do so here, and to speak briefly to the people of St. Philip North. And I see quite a few from St. Philip South as well. And my few minutes here tonight, I want to talk to you about the two representatives quickly from the North and the South, people that I have interacted with for the last five, seven years and who I found to be extremely decent and honest and very dignified citizens of our country and of our republic. People that you can feel proud telling your children that they can go into politics and be like Dr. Sonia Brown or be like Mr. Indar Weir. I'm sure that many of you would have seen over the last two elections the kind of indiscipline and the indignant behavior, the disrespect that was exhibited by many members on the opposite side. In fact, we saw it as recent as just a few nights ago. And I want to ask all the people of St. Philip to recognize that this kind of indiscipline and disrespect should never be a part of our political landscape and that it is in their interest to ensure that the people who come to them with this form of, of disrespect and anger and hate, that you ensure that your vote is a strong one against them. And in a couple of days, you have to do that. You have the opportunity to do that and I want to ask you to support the platform of Dr. Sonia Brown, the very respectful, committed, honest, and intelligent 
representative from here in the north, and the hard-working homeboy, the guy who is almost on the block, from the block to your homes in the south, across the constituency, helping the poor, helping the weak, helping the young, ensuring that there are programs for the youth. And I want to ask the people of St. Philip South to ensure that we also return Indar to Parliament. We saw the work, in fact, we heard Mr. Maskell a couple of nights ago explaining to you the level of work that Indar has done as the Minister of Agriculture. And he went as far as to say that some of the most brilliant ideas in agriculture were espoused by this minister in the last three and a half years. So he does not only give you reason to re-elect him as the representative for the constituency of St. Philip South, but he has also done that as the Minister of Agriculture and Food in our country. He has spent the last three years, I can tell you, working as the Minister of Agriculture to ensure that we continue to have good quality produce and that we meet the demands for our country for food and do so successfully. Indar has also been speaking to me quite frequently from Miami, and I remember one of the conversations we had about eight to 10 months ago, when he said to me that there are some difficulties being experienced at the St. Philip District Hospital. And he said to me, Valley, St. Philip District Hospital is not in the South, but it is in St. Philip. And I want you to work on getting some supplies to ensure that the people at that hospital are protected against COVID. And I immediately set to work on his behalf. And within a matter of three weeks, I had delivered to that hospital over $250,000 worth in supplies for the hospital, from bed linens to PPE equipment, to chairs, to walkers, to wheelchairs. You just name it. And I went out and collected it and had it shipped to St. Philip Hospital on the request of Indarware so that he and Dr. Brown, because I'm not sure he knows much about PPE equipment, but I know he knows that they were needed. But I know that Dr. Brown would have been very happy to see the kind of supplies that would have come to the hospital to ensure that those patients were taken care of. I want to also touch on two very important issues that I would have experienced from the leader of our country because the leadership of this country matters. The leadership of this country matters now more than ever. We saw the leadership of this country in the last three and a half years literally transforming the country after transforming the economy. Um, she worked on the loans, on the loans that Barbados had, the excessive debt repayment, all of these things we saw being done by our leader within the first month of taking office. She ensured that the sewage was taken care of within the first couple of weeks of taking office. She ensured that the beautiful buses that just came by when she wanted to hear the sound were part of our landscape. And I can go on, she ensured that garbage became a thing of the past on our streets. And I can tell you that our leader is one of the people now who is not only seen as the Prime Minister of Barbados, but my friends in the diplomatic service, they all call her the Prime Minister of the Caribbean and wish that they had a leader of the caliber of Mia Amar Motley to leave their respective countries. I remember when I went, when she posted me to Miami, one of the things she said to me is, Naval, I want us to immediately work 
on getting Barbadians back to the U.S. to work. And I can tell you that for 10 years, we call, them the lost, we call it the lost decade, but it is more than we have ever or can ever even imagine. I'm telling you that within 10 years, the last administration paid staff working in Miami to recruit people from Barbados for the hospitality service, for the cruise ship services, whatever entertainment. And uh, you would not believe that for 10 years, people were paid and not one person was recruited from Bar Not one person was recruited from Barbados to work in the southeastern US, which spans 11, 11 cities, 11 states, and major cities, including Miami, and Fort Lauderdale, which are the hubs for the cruise ship industry in North America. And we did not have one person, and I can tell you that within the three and a half years that we have been working on that program, that we have recruited more than 150 Barbadians. You can check the labor office more than 150 Barbadians to Miami and across the southeastern, the southeastern U.S. to work in hospitality, to work in the cruise ship, to work in a number of areas in different hotels, as well as many of them came up there to learn and be trained to be top quality workers in the hospitality industry. We have a leader that without her in Barbados in the next five years, we don't know where we will go under the other side other than down, because we went down and down and down, and we can go no further under them. I want to thank you for the few minutes that I've spoken with you. I want to again ask you to remember next Thursday, next Wednesday, Dr. Brown, Sonia Brown, your candidate in the North, in Darwin, your candidate in the South, and we will come back here thanking you sometime soon as we again have Mia Amor Motley as our Prime Minister and the group that she works with. We will all ensure, including the next speaker, go right back to Parliament to continue the work that you put them there to do in the last three and a half years. Vote for the Barbados Labour Party's candidate in every constituency. Ask your friends, your family, and all your relatives to give us that support because we will continue to work for you. Thank you and have a good night, everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Nuval Greenwich, for coming on this platform and updating us on the good work you're doing in Miami on behalf of the people of Barbados. Now, the night is moving along fairly rapidly, and therefore, we will get on with the business. I have the pleasure of introducing a very dynamic young lady who is the General Secretary of the oldest trade union, oldest and largest trade union in Barbados. She is a member of parliament for St. George North. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Tony Moore to the podium. Good night, good night.
stand on the shoulders of many other female politicians who have paved the way for people like myself and Dr. Brown. And I hear from your support and I feel from your energy that you understand that in supporting her, you are supporting one for whom what you see is what you get. Dr. Brown is one that does not hold any punches. She's one that what she thinks and what she feels is what she brings to the table for, on your behalf. So when she comes around to you and when she's listening to you and when you are communicating to her all the things that you want her to do on your behalf, and she tells you that she's gonna try her best. That's not just lyrics. That's not just something to pacify you. She's telling you it because that is what she intends to take to the table on your behalf. Sometimes even controversially so. Because she is not about pleasing. She is about representing. And true representation calls for integrity. And integrity is one of the core values that this Barbados Labour Party stands for. And tonight, I was happy to be able to be invited, having completed two spot meetings in my own constituency, I was happy to be able to come here and endorse her and commend her and support her to you because you elected her on the 24th of May 2018 and you will do it again when you will do it again when on January 19 2022 and there's a simple reason for that people of St. Philip North you understand that leadership matters and what is leadership is leadership of the kind that ceases to get as much for itself as it can and forgets about the people who really brings them and pushes them into leadership. It's leadership of the kind that will come to you and appeal to you for your vote, come to you and appeal to you for your support. And then they're gathering as much for themselves as possible and leaving poor people behind. Is that the kind of leadership you want? Is that the kind of leadership that Dr. Brown brings? Is that the kind of leadership that you had before her? When the late one is sure. That is the kind of leadership that you had. And that is why on the 18th of May, 2018, not only you, the people of St. Philip North, not only those in my constituency in St. George North, but every other constituency around Barbados turned out in their numbers and they voted against what they knew they did not want for themselves. And so tonight, I don't intend to keep you long because I know that the hour, that bedtime hour is quickly approaching for many of you. But tonight, I want to challenge you not only to answer the question of leadership, but more intimately, more personally, I want you all to answer one question for yourselves. What type of future do you want for yourself? What type of future do you want for your families? What type of, kind of future do you want for the constituency of St. Philip North? What kind of future do you want for the new parliamentary republic of Barbados? Do you want a future in which you can feel safe? And when we speak of safety, we speak of environmental safety. Look at all that has been happening in our communities. Do you remember a time when in our communities you passed along our streets and you were seeing garbage piled up? Do you remember a time in our communities when our tourism product was compromised by sewage on the street? Do you remember that there was a time when there was no connectivity to the climate crisis that impacts us all? Where we were just moseying along, 
confining ourselves in bars by downgrade after downgrade, but there was no kind of focus on the things that matter to us, matter to our families, matter to our well-being. I not only speak of environmental safety, therefore, I draw our attention to economic safety. There was a time in this country, not only the downgrades that came every time some rating agency came and had a look in on Barbados, but there was a time in our country when we had massive layoffs, when we had a situation in which young people could not earn our young people could not look forward to a tangible opportunity, a real opportunity provided to them to earn. They could not even look forward to an opportunity to learn, to learn more. So many young people had the experience of their educational opportunities being snatched or dragged out from under them because poor people can't afford a lot of things. I would have looked forward easily to the opportunity to have subsidized tertiary education. But even that, even that was something that, something that was coveted and something that could not be yours because it was taken away from you. Not only environmental safety, not only economic safety, but social well-being. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to listen or even to examine what the manifesto is putting out to us. Opportunities for our elderly, opportunities to create citizens' villages across this country, opportunities for health insurance to come to low-income people. How many people know what it is to have health insurance? It, is it because we don't want it? Is it because we don't value or we don't care about ourselves and our well-being? But health insurance is something that's so costly. And so it's taken out of the reach of so many people. And this Barbados Labour Party that is saying to you that you are safer with Team BLP is committing to you that it will bring health insurance solutions or the possibility for our people to have health insurance where they don't now have it, and where you have it to negotiate with providers to ensure that you can get better and you can get more coming to you out of health insurance. I don't want to belabor you tonight with all the things that I know over time you will be hearing repeated, repeatedly speakers coming to you suggesting that we are bringing to you. But I only stand here to commend you and to say to you that as a representative of the people who are now come in an election on November the 11th, 2020, but who has committed her life to service, I come to you commending Dr. Brown because she does not stand here alone. She stands here with a team of willing and able and competent people who have steered us through some of the most difficult times over the last 43 months. She comes here standing and working with a team that although it had all the challenges that beset it at May 2018, found other challenges coming that they could not predict. We had the challenges of ash fall. We had the challenge of a freak storm. We had the challenge of hurricane. And oh my goodness, didn't we had the challenge of COVID, one that we are still living through. And I want to ask us this question. Can you imagine what life would have been for us if we had these challenges to endure on another administration? Could you imagine? You let you want to imagine. I know it's one that I wouldn't want to. Because I know considering that, and, and I, I ask these questions because I well understand too, that sometimes although a picture is right in front of us, some of us cannot easily see it. Because things might seem to be happening so easily. And although we are transitioning from crisis after crisis and coming out of it feeling okay, we may well underestimate that the effort that it takes 
and the level of competence that it takes to deliver at this level. I just want to urge you, the people of St. Philip North, not to take your franchise for granted, not to take your ability to vote for granted. I want to urge you not to forget how badly off we were just under four years ago. Because in reflecting on where we were, I am sure that we all have a better appreciation for where we are. And as you answer that question that I asked earlier, what kind of future do you want for yourself? You will see that your future will not be perfect with Team BLP. It will not. But your future will certainly be brighter. Your future will certainly be more sure in the hands of people who are not only competent, but people who care. And as you reflect on that question as well that I asked earlier, what kind of leadership matters? You not only look at one who has been standing firm and standing strong in representation for you over the past 43 months, but you will reflect on the leader, the leader that Team BLP has, a leader that is recognized for her capacity and her tremendous amount of care, her articulation, everything, not only by us here in Barbados, but by many across the world. And you will recognize that this train is moving strong. This train is moving in the right direction. This train is moving ahead. This train, Team BLP, is going to be here to steer us through all the other challenges and all the other mountains over which we have to climb. This train is moving strong, and you, the people of St. Philip North, will bring us home and land us safe to victory, giving more to the people of St. George North because you're going to vote for Sonia Brown. More with Sonia Brown, more with Sonia Brown, more with Team More in St. George North, more with Team BLP, safer with the BLP, safer with the BLP, January 19th, come out and vote. Don't take your vote for granted. We look forward to continuing to serve you. We look forward to continuing to uplift our working class people and their families. We love you and God bless St. Philip North. Thank you, thank you. You have just heard the very dynamic Tony Moore. And we, the people of St. Philip North, wish her every success as she faces her first general election. Don't forget, she won the by election. This is her first general election. I have no doubt that she will be just as successful. Now we have come to the last speaker for the evening. I heard this gentleman last night at Long Bay, and I was very impressed with, by the dynamism of his speech. Now, we all know that agriculture is the backbone of every society, and we have seen a level of development and vision with respect to agriculture in Barbados over the last three and a half years. The person who has been responsible for motivating that change and that progress and that vision is Mr. Indar Weir the Member of Parliament for St. Philip South. And I invite Mr. Weir now to come and continue where he left off in Long Bay last night. Come on, Mr. Weir.
night, Labour Party family. Good night, St. Philip North. Good night, good night. I am closing this innings tonight. I am asking you to close it with me because I have a couple of things to say and I deem it very important for all of you within earshot of my voice to be able to hear what I have to tell you. I am cognizant of the hour and I promise not to delay you too long, but I want to start by telling you that the best decision you will ever make in St. Philip North is to return Dr. Sonia Brown as your duly elected representative. <sighs> if at all, it is the view of anyone in this constituency that after three and a half years of hiding, they should go back to Michael Ashley, then I regret to inform you, you would have gone back on your decision on 2018 when you found him useless, lost his way, and was no longer capable of representing you. And I say this because I am very familiar with this constituency. I live here in Merricks. I live in Cold Stairs. And I am familiar with that road that was done to suit the 2018 election. And this road here in Merricks going up towards Quartz by Alice Shop Pass, you go up, was a rush job. And it is obvious to everyone that there was no consultation with the Barbados Water Authority. Clearly, he and David Eswick then used to speak because I can't understand two colleagues fixing a road here in Merricks, and every day you get in the water, main burst in the middle of the road. And no matter how much you try, that road is always a mess because it was an election job and it was a rush job. And I strongly believe that when you have that kind of perfidy in politics, you should punish it every time it comes around. And you did the right thing in 2018. When you punish such a perfidious act by making sure that Sonia Brown become your duly elected representative. And I'm here tonight to tell you that you should do the same thing again on January 19th when you go to the polls. Sonia is a good woman. She's a frank woman. Sonia speaks her mind as the Prime Minister told you earlier tonight. But I understand that there's a gentleman who believes that anything he says in St. Philip North, you all should go with. I got the same problem in St. Philip South too. A fool on a mule in the middle of the road. Oh Lord. And every time he speaks, I'm reminded of how Eric Fly described those who did not know what they were doing when they got up to try to deceive people and Eric Fly waited on them. And I cannot forget when I went to Jemswick to speak to an old man and the old man said to me, and there, I only ask one thing of you, you know. Whenever you speak on the platform, do not respond to those people who are cursing you and the Barbados Labour Party. Because Eric Fly referred to them as a fool on a mule in the middle of the road. And I have seen it come to pass. But ladies and gentlemen, Michael Ashley is not a match for Sonia Brown. Sonia Brown laughed, she prayed, 
Tonight she was praying for responding to him. She asked the Lord to forgive her. And I want to say to you all that once Michael Ashley was parading on a platform trying to learn how to dance. Now, I was a professional dancer. But I wouldn't pretend that I wanted that to have you seen her by myself. I would have to have Sonia as my partner. But rather than he seek to partner with her, he wants to come up against her to hold some more blows. And I'm saying to you all, Sonia Brown sees all the people in St. Philip daily at her clinic. She's a community medical doctor. So it's inevitable that they will see her. So the first thing he started with is attempting to fool all of you into believing that you don't see her because your eyes must be defiled. And if for no other reason, ladies and gentlemen, you all should punish him for that because the time has come where we must chase those crazy ball heads out of the town. And I'm very serious. I am serious because this election, I thought, the Democratic Labour Party would have at least tried to outdo the Barbados Labour Party platforms in order that they may win your hearts. But rather than seek to do so, they have gone back to where they left off in 2018. And if I'm to be guided by what they are coming with, I wish to assure all of you that their only interest is in the public purse and not in you. You cannot tell me that after you went into hiding for three and a half years, you have not come back with a single solution to convince the people of Barbados that you are an option for government. And when we look at the Barbados Labour Party programs, we have enough meat on the bone that they could attempt to chew on, but unfortunately, the meat is so succulent that all they can do is enjoy and seek to deceive the people by pretending that we have done nothing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in St. Philip North, I travel from Coles Terrace to Marleyville, to St. Catharines, to Three Houses, to Church Village where I was born. It was the most horrible road you could want to drive on. I asked myself over and over and over, why would somebody represent this constituency for 15 years and left this road in this deplorable condition? And Sonia Brown, in three short years, is allowing me now to drive on that road with comfort and with ease because I no longer have to maneuver if I can drop in the ditch where the spring water runs along by wheelchair. I don't have to wonder if I have to change my suspension when I drive on that road. That road, all the people of St. Philip North, from Church Village to Bayfield to Marleyville to Merricks, complained about that road for many, many, many decades. And you had a man up here who was Minister of Transport and Works and did not fix that road. Sonia, give it to you. And that is deserving of your vote because she is here to look after you. So have you seen her? Go and drive on the road. She's out there. Long Bay. I ran in this constituency. I was defeated by Michael Ashley, and there was a huge boss about how bad the man beat me. I got licked up, 
And I lived to see Sonia Brown beat the man worse than he beat me. So I, I am convinced in my mind that Sonia will beat him again because the people have already spoken in 2018. And I'm going to come back to why I am convinced she would beat him. Because we have to manage this conversation to you, the electorate of Barbados. I went to St. Philip South. Here in this constituency, I got 1,975 votes. I wouldn't forget it. It is etched in my memory. And everybody was telling me I got the worst defeat in St. Philip. I went to St. Philip South. And I got close to 5,000 votes compared to the man who was the Attorney General that got 1,400. That's why it's called blows. And we ain't walking about bossing. I mean, man, get on me. And we ain't walking about boasting. But they bring a man up there now, just like they have the one up here, who walking about talking about how they're going to win every box. And I am on the ground, why is there or walking around talking? I'm, on, I'm speaking to people here who WhatsApp me daily. Sonia, I'm now sharing a lot of these messages with you. I've been receiving them for three and a half years. And I've been asking people, how do you feel on the ground? What do you think? And everybody's come back tell me, who send that Paku out there by you? And I'm asking myself, what is a Paku? And they said to me, that's young people expression in the 70s and the 80s. Where do you used to call your Paku when you're in the good? Now, I know, and all of you know, that if Sonia Brown is given the opportunity to represent this constituency again, and many of you who have been WhatsApping me, and I keep this information because I know it would be useful. Many of you have been asking for opportunities. Some just comes and say, I want a piece of work. I get you. We don't always have work, but whenever there's an opportunity, Sonia will give you work. There are some of you who come to me and say to me, I need a little help. The children ain't gotten a breakfast. I want some food to put on the table. Whenever Sonia has support and vouchers, she will give to you. She has a breakfast program that the Prime Minister spoke about that she herself delivers. But I have people who come to me as Minister of Agriculture asking me for an opportunity for ownership, asking me for a chance to be able to chart their own destiny never to return to an employer. And I have started a program that would benefit the people of St. Philip, St. Philip North, South, and West. Where we have young people coming in through the BADMC and being trained as business people and then placed on land right here at River and St. Philip in Sonia Brown's constituency. And through this program, and all of you who are not familiar with it, Listen to me tonight because I'm speaking right here to you so that you can start the process of getting involved. And the program allows you, first of all, three months of training. After your graduation, you're given land, minimum one acre, maximum three. You are then given the cultivation services. The land is properly prepared you are given the irrigation system, you are given the seedlings, and you are given the extension services and the safety equipment. 
to start you off in agriculture and give you a chance to become your own businessman or woman. And then the BADMC is buying as high as 40% of all that you produce so that you have guaranteed market for your produce. And when Sonia read about this in the newspapers, we discussed it at parliamentary group, and she realized we were putting in a dam at River. She called me and she said, and that is my constituency. So anything you're doing about here, I want to be involved in it, I want to know about it. And I said to her the next day, Sonia, come, let's go to River. Let me show you this project. Go down to River. And you would see that we have excavation work down there where six million gallons of water is being provided for all of you farmers here in St. Philip North, that farm in River. And why are we doing this? We are doing it because we understand what climate change is doing to Barbados. And we understand that the water that used to flow from the tree houses stream all the way down is not enough anymore. We also understand that the guys who are upstream are blocking that stream and stopping those downstream from getting access to water. So we determined that we were going to take control of the situation and we are placing a dam there with 6 million gallons of water, an investment of $5.9 million by this government to make sure the people of St. Philip, and particularly St. Philip North, can do farming at river continuously all year round. That project is about to finish at the end of this month, and then the irrigation system will be connected. And my friends, I want to tell you that I visit river frequently. And the farmers out there will be given an opportunity to use a state-of-the-art irrigation system where you get credit just like on your mobile phone. I'm doing the same at layers. So if you determine that your water demand per day is... $500, you get $500 on your meter through the BADMC. You use that, it ran out, you can go back for a top up. That is going to get rid of all the cases where people use the irrigation system and then find that they can't pay at the end of a month because they haven't managed the business properly. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing a new deal to the people of St. Philip North by way of giving them a chance to be empowered and enfranchised in agriculture and they can then go on to expanding and becoming real business people just like all the rest of the big ones that we like to cry down but don't provide opportunities for the small ones. And that is what we are doing because when we determine as a government that we're going to bring small people along, these are the things that we are doing because this is what representation looks like. And I'm saying to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, that if Sonia Brown can determine that the people of St. Philip North must be empowered and enfranchised, then I am saying to you that she should be re-elected on January 19th, and that she should be given a chance to continue her work over here. Housing, we already know, the Prime Minister spoke about it, 10,000 houses are coming. But I drive past the ones here on my left when I'm heading home. I see about two of them are occupied now. They were there for a while. I am of the view that they're too expensive. So people are not interested in them even though they are allocated. But I ask myself, how you get a refrigerator and a king-size bed in one of those houses? You will probably have to go through the roof because you can't get a king-size bed in there. And if you put in a king-size bed, then from your bed, you must be able to sit down and stir your pot because the bed is going to stretch all the way out to the kitchen. And I'm saying this is a lack of thought and a lack of respect 
for people when those houses were being designed. So it came as no surprise to me that we had to reduce the prices on those houses in order for us to be able to move them because the focus on building those houses wasn't about getting poor people houses, you know. The focus on those houses was to be able to give contracts to people to do the houses. That was the focus. Because when you give the contracts to people, then clearly you know that you and whoever else were interested would be able to say, well, we built some houses, but we ain't, we ain't too sure about where the benefits are going to go. And that is the problem we have had over the, last, over the 10 years of Democratic Labour Party rule. And I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, without taking up too much of your time, that you must take into consideration what has happened to St. Philip North and the changes that took place here in the last three and a half years with an MP that gave out jobs to people who otherwise would have been left to struggle in a shutdown. And this is the point that I wanted to make earlier that I said I would come back to. Because it was unprecedented in Barbados when an entire country had to shut down. Even its main economic driver was placed on pause, tourism. And that we had to go through a time when nobody could go to work unless you were part of the essential services. And that people lost their jobs, businesses collapsed, small businesses closed, shops couldn't make money. And we as a government had to rise to the occasion. MPs had to stay indoors just like every other citizen. And for somebody to come and deceitfully try to make it look as though MPs are not seen during a shutdown is ridiculous and unforgivable and you all should punish it with your votes. But at the same time, people of St. Philip North were going to St. Sonia Brown's office to collect vouchers to go to the supermarket as they were going to mine. They were going. So we were helping people and bringing people along. A $600 grant to people who were below the poverty line, couldn't pay like bill water, bill and buy food, lost their jobs. These are the things that Sonia Brown was doing during that shutdown period. And for anyone to suggest to you that you must treat that period as if it never existed and we were always in normal times, it is unforgivable and you should never, ever, ever trust that individual. And I'm saying to all of you, unlock your minds because whilst we are bringing value to this conversation, they are on platforms cursing women Insulting women when they don't find an MP is a long, tall, sexy politician. I don't know what that has to do with anyone on a platform. And when a, a, a young lady seeks to describe her leader as a dog, calling her leader a great thing, it tells you that they have not prepared themselves for the process. And if they're not prepared for platform speeches, how can they then be prepared to run a country, ladies and gentlemen? They cannot be. And this is the first point at which you do your appraisal. We have kept a clean platform. We have been careful to deal with the issues. We have been dealing with the issues to tell Barbadians why we should be re-elected and they are on platforms telling all of you why we should be re-elected to because they have brought nothing and they're cursing women and cursing everybody on a platform each and every night. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say to you, this election 
is not BLP, it is not DLP, it's not PDP. In a kind of P. This election is about you, the people. This election is about humanitarian efforts. And I'm saying to you that we have a leader that has demonstrated that she is world class. That every leader in the world wants to be associated with her. And if that happens globally here, you should embrace it. And I'm saying to you that the only party that is capable right now of bringing you through what we are going through is the Barbados Labour Party led by Mayor Amor Motley. And I want all of you to come out and give Sonia Brown your votes here in St. Philip North. And give me in St. Philip South and hey, give hey, Kay hey, McConney hey, hey, in St. Philip West. I thank you. I'm obliged to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Indar Weir. Now, before you leave tonight, I want to make an announcement that the Barbados Labour Party will be hosting a mass meeting tomorrow night, January 13th, beginning at 7 o'clock at the Emerald City Car Park. Speakers will be, and please listen, at 7 o'clock, I said, 7 o'clock. Speakers will be Dr. Clyde Maskell, Lisa Cummins, Kerry Simmons, Dale Marshall, Sandra Husbands, Adrian Ford, Tony Moore, and political leader, Mayor Amor Motley, along with the BLP candidates for St. Philip, Dr. Sonia Brown, our own girl, hey, 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 hey. Kay McConney, and Inda Weir. We want to invite you to come out to that meeting and of course within the COVID environment and the necessary restrictions, we invite you to adhere to the protocols. And we urge those of you who are listening to live streaming to tune in tomorrow, seven o'clock for this mass meeting at the Emerald City Car Park beginning at seven o'clock. Now you have been a wonderful audience and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight and giving support to the platform of the Barbados Labour Party. And we urge you once again to support our candidates in St. Philip, Dr. Sonia Brown, Indawir, and Kay McConney. Good night, and may the Almighty bless us all. Thank you very much. Who